Hello and welcome to another episode of A Ghost in the Magazine. I'm Steph. And I'm Elle. And this week's movie is House on Haunted Hill. 1999, not to be mistaken with the black and white. Was it black and white from 1959? I think so. I didn't watch it. I didn't either. I should have because it's Vincent Price, I believe, so. Oh, is it? Mm Mm-hmm. And this guy's name is Stephen Price. I think that was a nod, yeah. I like it, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to refer to everybody as not their character names because I only remember Stephen Price's name, okay? Um, He also, he's Captain Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean. Hmm. Only it's hard to recognize him because he's got this sick little Sharpie stash right above his top lip. It's dashing. (laughs) Sure, that's what you want to call it. No, it's gross. <laughs> I kept wanting to rub the screen. Yeah. Off there, like, get, get it there. off. Go but away. It, yeah, it, it really, like, makes his character extra icky. He's an icky man, so. Yeah. Might be, yeah. so. Um, I think his character's super cool, though, because I love roller coasters, and, um, they they show his newest roller coaster that starts at the top. I thought that whole scene was very fun. They really underutilized freaking Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer as cameraman, and I really like that. Like, yeah, stick him in the back with the nerds. You know? Honestly, that would have scared me shitless. Like, I would have been deceased at the bottom of that because I have claustrophobia and just being in an elevator is not okay for me. Like, I'm always kind of low-key panicking. If I if there was really a ride like that, I would die. I would simply pass away. Simply pass away. I'm not laughing at you when I'm smiling. It's just because, like, yeah. But I'm that kind of, like, adrenaline junkie. Not actually, like, jumping out of a plane, which is on my bucket list, but, like, I have to be sweet-talked into that, mm. into doing that. But, like, not really... really. Yeah. And mm. I love that it was very realistic that the cable snapped on the elevator. I'd be pissed if I wasn't, like, prepared and I was just doing an interview with this motherfucker. I'd be pissed. <laughs> so, yeah. He's that kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think... I think he's kind of, I think he's cool, even though he's icky. I think the whole dynamic he has with his shitty wife is, it's psychotic, but they're like kind of perfect for each other. Even the entire movie, they're trying to kill each other. I think it really works for them. And I think, you know, spoiler alert, I think it's great that they'll be together for all of eternity. Yeah. Yes. I also think it's really telling when he thinks somebody else killed her. There's yeah. actually like a moment of emotion there. It's yes. Because, and I don't think it's because he's like really, I think he wanted to be the one to do it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> he's like, no, I deserve to kill that bitch who I love because she's my match, but yeah. like, she got to go. And she's fucking I'm- hot. She's like a. I- it, brother she's like a 50 out of 10 and he's like a five a slimy five and she reminds him every chance she gets like i love you for your money even <laughs> you're ugly you look like a foot with a mustache drawn on yeah whatever he is there's a mustache drawn on <laughs> yes he's an ugly foot someone's ugly bunny any foot with a mustache drawn on him we're getting stuck in weird places on this movie but that's okay because you know this movie I haven't seen it in a really long time so I didn't remember much about it it is genuinely like freaky and it's a really really good time it's very atmospheric I really love the set design Mm -hmm. um this whole little coffins with guns within a coffin shut the fuck up this is a wicked party i <laughs> almost wish i had been invited yeah you know I mean? almost yeah uh-huh. <laughs> this movie uh scared the shit out of me when i used to watch it when i was younger um yeah because this was one of my mom's favorites again you know this was right <laughs> around the era where mom and i were watching movies together a lot uh when i was a younger teenager and yeah 
this i watching this again god the terrible cgi at the end though dude it scared scared the shit out of me when i was a kid but now i'm like what the nintendo 64 is going on here no literally the exact same because i remember being scared shitless of this movie and then i was so gung-ho through the movie until you get there and i'm like oh come on you're trying to ruin (laughs) that's not that's not very nice (laughs) so the premise of this movie of course there is an asylum where the patients revolted against the evil dr vanneket because well he was evil (laughs) um and then yeah um they revolted it went on lockdown the house ate all of them and their souls live in the darkness Mm -hmm. and so of course this like psychotic babe wants to host her birthday party there because why the fuck not Mm -hmm. and um yeah there's a snafu with the freaking invite list and he shreds her list, but the house intercepts his list and invites randoms who are related to the people who survived mm-hmm. this incident back in the day. Dun, dun, dun. So you have Tay Diggs, you have What's Her Face from Legally Blonde, um, you have Sandy Cohen from the OC, who will never not be oh, Sandy shit. Cohen. I didn't even realize that was him. Yeah, and so that's Sandy. His eyebrows are way less imposing in this. <laughs> you know why, though? It's just because of the shape of his glasses, because oh. Sandy doesn't wear glasses, so you have full view. And I know this because of my glasses and my eyebrows. That's all it is. And then there's a another blonde lady. She's in stuff. I cannot remember what she... You know what? She hmm. played Helen Shiver's sister. And I know what you did last summer. It just came to Okay. Me. Yeah. I don't know what else she's been in. Respectfully to her. It's, it's not... It doesn't say anything about her work. It's just me. It, Honestly, the two blonde chicks were hard to tell apart for me, so... <laughs> The only reason I could tell them apart is because the, uh, I've seen Legally Blonde so many times. I knew that the other one wasn't in Legally Blonde. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Because they look, they could be sisters. They could be related. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying all white people look the same. Yeah. I, I don't know if I mentioned Tay Diggs already, but Tay Diggs is in it. Mm-hmm. Um and then so there's like layers of deception and there's lots of stuff happening but can we can you guess who my favorite character was it's not the mustache is it (laughs) huh i don't know like mine's mine's obviously uh famke jansen but that would be the obvious choice less (laughs) obvious is the little man who owns this asylum oh shit i forgot about that guy yeah he's like a funny He's like he's, a little shithead. He's like a little scrawny Jeff Goldblum knockoff. Yes. And I love <laughs> him. I'm like obsessed with him in this movie because he knows what's up. Like he knows this house is haunted and he's like, give me my money. Give me, pay me my money. Give me the money right now. He says, I want it. So you give it now. That. <laughs> He's such a weaselly, snivelly little bitch, too. I just love him. We do. He gets his money. This guy's just handing out millions. Like, he's mm-hmm. just handing out millions, like, they're dollar-dollar bills, and they're at a strip club, which is wild. And I can see how that would be, you know, enticing to some people, especially in 1999. <laughs> Not me! No. I don't then, know, dude. No. No. No, I'm not taking the risk, especially if I'm the only black person there. Well, well congrats to Tay Diggs because he actually was one of two who made it. So I also really love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. It's giving Deep Blue Sea mm-hmm. and LL Cool J. I love it. But no, if I'm the only black person there, I'm out. Especially if when I get there, he's like, hi, you got to get out of your car because the driveway doesn't work. You have to walk directly. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. And then they start revealing that like he they're both going back and forth and they're 
clearly crazy as shit and then i didn't invite these people did you invite these people i have no idea who the fuck these people are i'm out (laughs) yeah Uh, i don't know i think the money mechanism is good though because it gives the one blonde girl she lied about who she was to get there you know so she obviously needs the money (laughs) obviously and also i think it's very fitting that those two survived because he's adopted and mm-hmm. she wasn't even the right girl to begin yeah. with. That's true. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, don't eat me. Haunted. Wrapped it up in a bow. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to know how they got down off that building at the end. Yeah. And they got all the money. Yes. But see, it's not it's not worth it to me. Especially because, like, they got punked, like, almost immediately she first of all they didn't know each other and she's like going off when he disappears about i thought you were a good guy but you don't know him you just met him five minutes ago Mm -hmm. i think you thought he was handsome and you're pissed that he's also an asshole now yep And, and then the ghost of him as the ghost of you by my man starts playing in the background has her digging around in a vat of bloody goop yelling his name i'm not doing it if no. i see you, stranger good riddance i'm sorry but like i would have to have some sort of like deep emotional attachment to be going through some bloody gross goop. you and me i would do it for you You're, i would do like, it for you yes you're not gonna eat my best friend. I don't think so. I would have dove in there like Harley Quinn. Come on, wait, but Tay Diggs, you are on your own, yeah. buddy. Sorry. Cute though. Cute though. <laughs> Rip. Yeah. I'll take his money. Especially because like the ghost version was acting real weird and not talking. Like real weird you're... and his eyes were glowing. Yes. Oh, but- you're in a haunted fucking asylum. Are you really going to believe that there's nothing like a foot here? <laughs> like strange things are clearly a foot. You got locked down with strangers. Right. And this little man with glasses is aggressively telling you that the house is alive. And it's gonna kill you and eat you. It's like I would assume I, I the... think everyone should have taken the, the angry little man a little bit more seriously, you know? I think so, too. I always, because, you know, Daddy DeVito and whatever, always take the little man seriously. You just you just never know, okay? It's, especially because, like, all these mysterious things are already happening. Right. This is not right, you know? My intuition would be like, bitch, get the fuck out of here. Okay, my strategy, if I stayed, would be to, like, find the front door, yeah. sit my ass against the front door with that gun, and just do that the whole night. I did the same thing. I literally thought the same. I'm not fucking moving. Mm-mm. Have fun. You'll have to come and get me, bitch. I'm not going to wander. Like, anything. salt circle around me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would work. Summoning would- my own demons up to fight the demons in the house. <laughs> my demons are better than your demons. <laughs> right. But- Not like the lady, the other blonde lady, she used to have a talk show and she was trying to get her way back in there. So she's got this fun little camera. Playing back baggins. They took her out so fast. (laughs) Like they split. (laughs) But she, I thought that that was interesting. The view through the camera, she could see the ghosts like Mm -hmm. reenacting this torture scene. And then they got her. She was kind of asking. Oh, yeah. For it. Don't go poking around in that shit. Like, for one thing, it's just disrespectful. Okay. People died there in terrible ways. Like, all you would have to tell me is this was an insane asylum that was operating in like before 1950. I would just be like, okay, I'm the fuck out. Like, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna sit against this door and I'll see you in the morning. Like, when we, yeah, catch me out, catch me by the door. How about that? I'm not, I'm not doing it. So they Mm-mm. took her. Okay. Oh, there was this wonderful scene, like, in the beginning, where there's this, like, trippy stained glass ceiling that cracks and almost decapitates Mm -hmm. McBody. Right? That, 
I'm I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of haughty, I love her fucking dress. Yeah. The dress in there. I, I her like nightgown is so cute too. Like I just she's a stunner. Like she's very captivating. We did great sticking her in there, especially because the other two women look exactly the same. Yeah. And she had that like sparkly eye eyeshadow that kept getting caught like caught in the camera. I was like, oh man, she's so pretty. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> love her. Um, yeah. I don't know. He gives them all guns to like hair guns to defend yourself against ghosts and each other. <laughs> um it's wild. But I feel like somebody should drop the Winchesters in here. <laughs> I no seriously. Can we can we do a fan edit? Oh god, that <laughs> would be amazing. <laughs> we could really get to the bottom of it because like you know, they talk about like the corrupt core of the house and the like, darkness that gets out. So that must have been what infected the doctor, like back in the day, right? Or like something he called in with being evil that brought it there or is it older like the lore mechanisms here aren't fully defined but they're interesting yeah, yeah so like it could you there could be there could definitely be more movies out of it mm -hmm. i feel like if we have to go based off of like just what we're given because his grandpa mm -hmm. built the place yeah so it can't be that old so I would feel like the doctor had to do something like in that Amityville horror movie with Dr. Ketchum or whatever. I feel like it's something like that. Mm. We don't have to talk about it. Well, Amity. just, yeah, I was going to say like, even like, I think of like American Horror Story, like the first season, the murder house one, like when you start like killing people and like causing like emotional trauma in, in a massive way you know it brings in it attract it would attract in supernatural things that would be attracted to negative energy i would think um like when when we're talking about war building you know yeah and then all those like catastrophic deaths happening at the same time mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, that's going to leave a mark. That's going to be a and thing. And more so than catastrophic deaths, I feel like, you know, living human suffering, putting yeah. out that negative energy has got to be like a magnet for things, you know? So, especially... Sure, just like, people... say, like poltergeists happen because teenagers are hormonal or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like that's... And that's the mechanism that they found, like, uh, with a lot of poltergeist hauntings is there's somebody that hits puberty and all of a sudden there's just, like, uh, they, they have, like, some kind of latent uh, ability. It manifests outwardly, however that works. I mean, that's that's the theory, of course, but... Yeah. I, I mean, I believe it. I, I make shit happen when I have really bad PMS, not necessarily... <laughs> like things flying around the building but shit happens <laughs> okay so you know shit's twisted between the loving couple and the other people are tired of their shit the people who survived he sees like vanica's ghost mm -hmm. on camera after his his like effects guy gets his whole face removed yeah gnarly like i wasn't expecting that when he turned the chair around mm -mm. Whole, whole not just his face like the you know the it's inner cord oh. yeah he's like cord out it's it's yeah. grotesque i that was that had to have been like that was practical because it wasn't fucked up and glitchy so yeah that was definitely it was practical. cool <laughs> yeah i really really i enjoyed that um so and then like his wife's sleeping so he's like Ugh, gotta go save her because again mm -hmm. he has to be the one to do the murdering not fucking yes both. um but then she's like when they find her she's getting electroshock tricuted yeah Impressive. that scene fucked me up a little bit just as somebody who had depression when i was younger and like heard about like shock therapy and shit i was like 
that was yeah. terrifying and then it like brought back watching the green mile oh my god <laughs> which was the most scarring uh visual of my childhood i think watching the green mile like that when the scene where he gets burned up on the electric chair where he catches on fire oh god yeah i didn't watch that as a child i watched it my mom watched all of these right when they came out <sighs> okay yeah i'd be like that sometimes it, it was like she was twitching and it was it was pretty bad you know yeah. and he he also showed a lot of emotion there he did yeah that's because somebody was killing her and it wasn't him and he's like what the fuck i also think he has major control issues yeah so like the fact that like his parade keeps getting shitted on he's like slowly losing his mind Mm -hmm. um but they you know you know they're sick of his shit so they lock him up in this room do you know what they call that room i don't know but that's fucking freaky as shit too it was a lot for me and i had like a physical reaction watching that because again like the spinning stuff and like we just went to a haunted carnival and they made me go first and i didn't think i was gonna make it through it like it was literally just like you walk through this tunnel and like it's like glow in the dark stars and shit like like kind of like your background but it's like glowing Mm. and it's it's spinning around you and there's a strobe light Mm. and i ate an edible and i have vertigo so as soon as i walked in i started (laughs) screaming (laughs) and i shut my eyes really tight because i felt like I was being yeeted into space and it was very uncomfortable and like my stomach I just closed my eyes and I felt my way through then they tried to go back through and they're like okay do it without touching the sides I said I'm not doing it because I have I can't go through with my eyes open like I'm gonna hit the ground and then you guys are gonna have to drag me out (laughs) it's awful it's sickening I can't imagine being locked in that yeah well just okay yeah this is a arguably uh you know mentally okay person i mean he he obviously has issues but not the type of issues that would have caused you to be one of the ogs locked in this so you have like sensory processing issues like the things that they used to throw you into asylums for and you get put into something like that that we've got (laughs) <laughs> like yeah well exactly again it's like the the psychic energy that had to have been created from tormenting these people has yeah. to be what caused that darkness so yeah especially when you think about like there was that massive list going around the internet of things that women would get thrown in institutions for back in the day like hysteria like pms having cramps disagreeing with men like like you know like yeah the basic shit I would have so been thrown in an asylum. Uh, she has sure. Elliot through his wife in an asylum. He's a piece of shit. Uh, I th- F. Scott Fitz- Fitzgerald did, and she actually died in a fire in an asylum, I believe. Zelda Fitzgerald, I think, died. Oh my god, what yeah. in the Jane Eyre? Well, it's because they the wives used to do so much work on their manuscripts and stuff, and when they asked to be, uh, you know... Credited? credited once the husbands got famous and started fucking around on him the husbands just threw him in an asylum said that they were being irrational irrational this yeah i would have been thrown into an asylum unquestionably if i would have been around in the 30s there's just no way i'm loud and i don't agree i don't agree and i get angry rationally so yeah and men just too much power this bitch would have been thrown in there Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And dangerous. We watched Ganjam Haunted Asylum, and it oh. felt like, I don't know, because I don't know what the history of asylums is in Korea, if it's the same as America, so I don't know, but uh, this kind of felt like, I, and I don't know how much of this is historically accurate, but it's probably, like, really, like, indulged, I, I would guess, but yeah. the things that were happening to people were inhumane. And I think that this came really close to kind of like telling 
a, an interesting, terrifying story while still being like, this was fucked up. This was massively fucked up. The doctor was evil. You know, I, I think that that is kind of a useful way of using that storytelling. We'll put it that way. Like a yeah, morally right way. <laughs> If, as close as you can come to it yeah i agree i think it, i just think that everything was done really well there was mm -hmm. a, a lot happening to fill up the space also which i like because if there's too much empty space i'm like it's too long what's happening yeah. mush, it, mush it close together yeah um, and the the twist just keep going because oh, it yeah. turns out she's not fucking dead she was fucking dr sandy cohen okay he brought her back to life and they're pranking the husband and they wanted him to die in that machine mm -hmm. um and she's just from that point forward she's very haunting oh, there's yeah. blood on the train of her like nightgown yeah, yeah. she kills sandy cohen he's a loose end she's a loose cannon yeah. you know and they think they kill uh, Barbosa Price, and he's got a fucking bulletproof vest on because he's Stephen fucking Price. Yeah. So he's still alive. I just so they're both alive, and and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna kill you now," and then they unleash the darkness. <laughs> yes. And I mean, aside from the darkness being like fuck fucking stupid looking like that room is gross the whole it's thing like the gross. idea of it being like this mass Ooh. of like dead souls like i don't yeah, know it's creeping towards her and he's like evelyn get up yeah right now and she's like is this another trick no man it's not it's not you yeah it's really gross like i will give it that like even for how <laughs> unappealing it is visually oh it you is. know what it was like i don't think you watched that that um dario argento movie church that was grotesque what this thing was trying to look like that thing did look like it was a massive like absorbed bodies it's kind of like it was made of smoke and not like physical bodies mm. and it had like it had like all the faces of the people who died like coming in and out but it also had like two naked ladies in the middle like, <laughs> like this. it was wild was it a cgi effect or was it something I else in the Dario argento one it was very much practical it's sickening okay yeah. i'm gonna have to watch that because that's like the first thing that i thought of like when i saw this thing it's like i'm not scared of this because it looks fucking stupid but if this was like actually like a practical effect that was done well, either yeah. it would be terrifying or it would be like campy as fuck. And I, you know, what? kind of both because it's, one way. Think it's so grotesque. If I had to breathe the same airs, I would pass away. It wouldn't right? even have to kill me. I would simply pass away because it's that fucking gross and it's next to me and it yeah. could touch me. It's gross. <laughs> I love, I love that. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to watch. We're gonna have to cover that. Maybe we'll put that in sometime later this year, next year. Okay. It was on Tubi when I watched it, but that was months ago. And I just happened to see someone mention it on Twitter, and I saw the cover, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck this is, but I'm watching it right now. Um, I have to say, um, you know, the darkness gets what she wants for the most part, but because of little. Is it Pritchard? I think it was named Pritchard. I think so. Like that. Yeah, that sounds the familiar. The little owner guy, his ghost managed to stay separated from the darkness and not consumed long enough to let them escape with mm -hmm. the money. I'm yeah. like, what? Else? Wrap it up, you know, send it off. It's good to go. I had a great time. I watched this movie twice this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I did too, but that's because I like zoned out in the middle and I wanted to make sure I had everything. Um, I wanted the... to watch once for funsies and then once for homework. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. This, this movie's so nostalgic for me and it kind of like, I think that when I sit and complain about lore and I complain that like the, the pieces don't come together, this is the movie that I kind of like compare it to because... <laughs> 
there is i mean it doesn't spell everything out it doesn't have to it just functions in a way that makes sense and makes you if if you're questioning you're questioning like what could it possibly be on top of what you already understand versus like what the fuck which is what we usually get (laughs) (laughs) Like, what are the rules? I don't know how many times I've had to say that. <laughs> I would I would have to say, I uh, I kind of like don't want to say this, but I think that this is like a, a four chud for me. This is like a higher up there one for me. You don't have to you feel any kind of way about that. Like, that's fine. I, it's gonna, I give it a three and a half chuds, really mm-hmm. solid. There's something missing for me. I can't really put my, my finger on it, but this is a very solid movie. And I was really happy to see it on Tubi because um, I love revisiting these, these movies that mm-hmm. we've been covering that we've seen before as kids. I love revisiting them as adults. And I love that, that I can still see like, the scary elements of this movie, you know, even though sometimes I feel like I've been very desensitized. Um, yeah. And, you know, I watch something like this and I'm like, okay, I'm, I, I remember this, this is the shit. This yes. is my meat and potatoes. This is the shit that I, I love. And I would definitely, anytime this movie popped up, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like the setting is great. The lore is solid enough. It holds water. Uh, the CGI is fucked she's up. The, oh. She's gorgeous. Like her outfits are great. Like everything, honestly, like all of it. Like even Doctor Sandy Cohen looks dapper as fuck. Like yeah, it all meshes together very well. I think the cast, even with the two ladies, yeah. I feel like the cast was very perfect. Thank mm-hmm. you for including and surviving a black man. Amen. Yes. I, I just, I really dig it. I really dig all of it. Even little Chris Kattan, like, like his character, I feel like added something, like it would have been very incomplete without him because mm-hmm. he's in like every scene, like, oh, we're all going to die now. Like I tried to fucking tell you guys, where's the alcohol? Like, <laughs> yeah. we get out of here. And ultimately ended up being the savior for the two surviving characters, even though he didn't make it. Love yes. him yes like it shows that like you can be you can you can be kind of negative about the situation like in a practical way (laughs) and still be the saving grace and know what's right and really like I hadn't even thought about it and again that's another way that the lore folds into itself that the Mm -hmm. two that escaped were not related to anyone there and so like what he's got to be thinking is like these guys aren't involved in this yeah pull the rope let them out Mm -hmm. and even though the prices weren't involved it's their fault that they're there in the first Mm -hmm. place they facilitated this incident so they didn't deserve to make it no and they were gonna kill each other anyway right I feel like as much as like I love them as a couple I'm glad the house ate them I feel like I would have been a little little disappointed if even one of them made it like eat them Mm -hmm. eat the rich yeah eat them keep them together fighting for eternity like yeah they will be great additions to the next time you haunt a bitch exactly i want the fucking okay you know what movie i want as a sequel to this is like a zach baggins-esque ghost hunter comes in here and tries to exercise the house and gets his whole crew eaten Yes. yes yeah i like it i like it who do we have to email Sure, I'm having a great time. And mm. this is very welcome after 31 Days of Horror. That was a lot. <laughs> was a it lot. sure as hell was. <laughs> we'll do it every year. We'll suffer for the mm. cause. But like, ooh, I love the breaks after. So no, I I changed my mind. I'm giving it four treads because Woo! why not? I feel like sure. this is definitely the best of that era too. Like yeah. that late 90s, early 2000s. And for me, that's like, you know that's that's my era of watching movies with my mommy so i just I love that for you. in the meantime you can find this podcast on the interwebs at ghost in the magazine dot site or on twitter at gitm podcast you can find me on twitter at witch x pudding and you can find me at nocturnical okay bye